Video 3, Traditional IT Infrastructure. We are going to take a look at what it would take to deploy a hosted application on traditional IT infrastructure. There are various layers to traditional IT infrastructure. Let us discuss the various factors you must consider while deploying at each layer. The first and the bottommost layer is the physical layer. This involves figuring out things like where to put your data center. It has to be a good place, a place that is not in a flood zone or earthquake zone. The data center should be secure. It should not be possible to physically break into the data center. It should have a good power supply, possibly from two grids. We also need a backup generator and a huge tank for diesel storage. It will also need cooling equipment. Once you get the data center set up, you will have to buy and install the servers in it. Connect them with cables, router, switches, and deploy software on each machine. You will also need to arrange for staff to maintain the data center. Hire network engineers and necessary security personnel. The physical layer allows us to have what we call the low level hardware resources layer. Most people like to think in terms of low level hardware resources. They will say things like we have one petabyte of storage capacity, but they might not know how many hard disks or servers it took to reach that amount of storage. Similarly, they might say we have one GBPS link, but they might not be concerned with how many routers or switches are present and what kind of networking configuration has been done. Low level hardware resources allow you to deploy low level software resources on top of it. These are software resources that are deployed to be used by higher layers, but we generally don't use this software directly. For example, databases. We don't use databases directly. It is almost always used in conjunction with some application. Similarly, with web servers and application servers. They are there to support the applications, but they are rarely used directly. Most developers and testers think in terms of low-level software resources and above. They don't really care about the lower levels unless there is a problem. If there is a problem, such as the database is slow, then they might dig into lower levels and check if the network is the problem or the machine is faulty. As long as the database is fast or the web server is fast enough, they don't really care about how things are laid underneath. Next, you have your application layer. This is where you develop and deploy your applications. This is where you ideally want most of your developers and testers to spend time on. They should not spend time at underneath layers. That is the goal. All the focus and effort should be on your application. At the end of the day, this is what distinguishes you from your competition. This is what makes Facebook Facebook and Google Plus Google Plus. Most users don't care about the architecture underneath Facebook. They just care about the application and that is it. Finally, you have your users. They use a variety of devices. PCs, which would be Windows, Linux and Mac and a variety of smartphones. Also, they are geographically located in different regions since this is a hosted solution. Traditional IT infrastructure issues. Now, traditional IT infrastructure has a lot of issues. We are going to take a look at the issues faced at each layer. At the physical layer, the biggest issue is that you need a lot of capital upfront. Renting the data center space, buying the servers, cooling equipment, backup generators, hiring staff to connect these servers, this is a huge upfront cost before you even start earning. Upfront cost is the killer for most startups. They cannot scale at this layer. The next issue you face is that the physical layer has physical limitations. The floor space, cooling capacity, etc. are physical limitations. 
this cannot be easily overcome. Let's say your data center has capacity of thousand servers and you need to add another thousand machines. You will have to find another place to house those extra servers. If you are lucky, you will find a place nearby to your existing data center. But if not, you will have to start the entire process again, searching for a safe place, rent it out, arrange for cooling, backup power, equipment and so on. You will also need a lot of good network engineers. Managing the network of 10 servers can be handled by a single person, but networking of thousands of servers is not easy. You will need teams of good quality network engineers who must handle not only installation and setup, but also maintenance and support. At the low level hardware resources layer, it is very hard to estimate the hardware requirements in advance. You will need to know how many users you will have and how will these users use your software. Let's take an example of Office 365. Let's say spell check is an expensive operation. Let's say that Microsoft is launching Office 365. They do not know how many users are going to use it at launch and what is the average spell check run by a person? Once a document, twice a document? Depending on these numbers, the need for CPU and memory would be very different, but they never know until they launch. Another issue you will face is that hardware becomes cheaper every month. Let's say today you buy 100 servers. From the day you buy the servers, to the day servers come to your data center, you have to get people to deploy it, the networking team to connect them to the network, the software team will deploy software on it. It will take a good three to six months before the machine is actually used, which is the average time in most big companies to get hardware. From the time you purchase the hardware to the time you are using it, the prices would have dropped or even the technology would have moved on. Let's say you bought Core 2 Duo servers while the market has moved to i3s and i7s. At the lower level software resources layer, you have a front licensing cost as an issue. Imagine that you are a startup and you want to use Oracle database. You know for a year you are going to be in development phase. But with Oracle, you will have to pay the entire licensing fees from the day you purchase the software. Similarly, for a lot of applications on the market, you will have to pay upfront licensing cost. You will need good software engineering team. It's easy for a maintenance team to manage a few machines but as the size of your company grows, simple tasks like installations, patching and updating can get cumbersome. You need an experienced, dedicated team to do such tasks. Application layer. At the application layer, problem is that you are tightly coupled to your geographic location. Let's say you release your application in India, but it becomes really popular in USA. The US users might not get the best performance because of the latency coming from India. They will get subpar experience. Now if you plan to move your application to US, then you'll have to start from scratch. Finding a suitable place for your data center, renting the place, buying the servers, deploying them, etc. The entire process you did in India has to be replicated again in US. You never know where your application will become popular. Take the example of Orkut. You must have had an account on it before Facebook. Some guys from Google developed it. It was so US centric that once upon a time in the list of cities from which you can choose your home city, the only option were US cities and people from outside US had to choose others. Still, surprisingly, the two countries where it became the most popular were Brazil and India. Why? They are two culturally different countries. 
speaking different languages, but around 70% of Orkut's user base was from them. This proves that when you launch an application, you will never know where it is going to be popular. Traditional IT infrastructure, main issues. But here are the two main issues with traditional IT infrastructure. The first main issue is infrastructure is not the core business. Your users do not care what the infrastructure is. As an engineer, you might wonder what kind of infrastructure does Facebook uses to support their 1 billion users. But think of the average user who uses Facebook. As long as Facebook is quick and available, he doesn't care. Google Plus might have a better IT infrastructure, but users are not going to be interested in it just because of that. It is the application layer that the user cares about. But if Facebook infrastructure starts having issues, then users will notice. Infrastructure can only cause issues for you if something goes wrong. As long as it is up and running, users don't really care. The next critical issue is that it is hard to scale. At every layer, it is hard to scale. You face more and more challenges each time you scale. Scaling gets harder and harder as you move from 10 servers to 100 servers, from 100 to 1000, and from 1000 to 10,000. The challenges you face grows exponentially. IT infrastructure pyramid of effort. I call this image the pyramid of effort. If you think about IT infrastructure, you will see that most of the effort has to be put at the lower levels as compared to the application layer. Setting up the infrastructure eats away at most of your resources, effort, time and money. And it is something your users don't really care about. It's something that can only cause problems if it does not work. It does not distinguish you from your competitors. This black area is what drowns most products and this is what Cloud is trying to solve. In this video, we saw that the effort and issues at each layer of traditional IT infrastructure. Finally, we saw that most of your effort does not go into your application, but into the infrastructure underneath. In the next video, we'll take a look at an example of moving a desktop application to a hosted solution and the challenges you would face while doing that.